Kasatu in the Gauteng province has handed over a memorandum on behalf of workers of the South African Post Office and the SABC to Treasury. The union says conditions faced by workers at these SOEs have been shocking for years with no salary increases and pending retrenchments. Kasatu says these entities that can be saved by government must act urgently. To tell us more, we are joined by Matthew Parks from Kasatu. Matthew, good to speak to you this afternoon. Just bring us up to speed with the contents of the memorandum that you recently delivered. Yeah, well, good afternoon. Thanks for having us. Um, so, look, as Kasatu, with our affiliates of the Communication Workers, you know, we've embarked on a series of actions and interventions um, to try to show solidarity with the workers at SABC and the South African Post Office and also to put pressure on and to engage with government to find some sort of intervention to resolve it beyond simply cutting workers' salaries or retrenching workers. Um, so we have had pickets on Thursday at SABC. We've had a march on Friday um, in Pretoria to the Treasury, uh, and also including meeting representatives of the Department of Labor and the Department of Communications. We did meet with the Minister of Communications on Thursday as well. Um, he's made a commitment to us to engage with the SABC board. Um, and also to engage with the South African Post Office Business Rescue Practitioners and to meet again with us next week. But I think for us is that, look, both the Post Office and the South African Broadcasting Corporation were once well-respected, internationally recognized uh, public institutions. We provide a valuable service in terms of public broadcasting, in terms of SABC and entertainment, and also in terms of postal services for the Post Office. We think they can be rebuilt. We think they can be stabilized. They need to be because they provide uh, an essential role in society. But what we can't afford is for them simply to deteriorate and to be allowed to collapse. Um, there has been some progress at SABC, but we're still very concerned that those workers didn't receive an increase for four years. Um, an increase has not an offer now be made for an increase for this year, but they, with, there's a dispute around it being backdated to the beginning of the financial year, which is a norm. We're hoping the minister can intervene to assist in that. And the post office, um, the post office, the issue. Sorry, carry on, Matthew. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, the post office has been quite a horrendous situation where workers have not received the salaries for months at a time, where the third party deductions like medical and pension funds were criminally not handed over to those funds. And um, there's been a pending retrenchment. Um, plan to retrench about 6,000 workers. That process is at the CCMA as well. We're hoping that we can intervene to, to stop that. Ultimately, it does need a complex set of interventions, um, from financial support to pay off its debts to both institutions, but also need a new business model for both of them, uh, because the nature of entertainment and public broadcasting has significantly changed. The existing model, SABC, is not a sustainable one. And, of course, to the post office, too, there is a need to assist it to reposition itself to simply move and beyond just posting letters, which is not a, a sustainable business model currently, given the technological evolutions, to also expand into courier services, to expand to become a, a multi-purpose government site where you could apply for your ID documents or social grants or NESFAS or SME funding, etc. But I think the point is we don't have the luxury of time. We can't simply allow workers to be denied increases, to be denied the salaries due to them, or to be threatened with the pretensions. These institutions can play a role. They can be saved but we need to see much more urgent action. So we are hoping our engagement with the minister on Thursday will lead to some positive results in the next few, few days, the next few weeks. Now, I'd like to think that the salary increases are the least of the workers' wor worries, uh, particularly when you consider that uh, they're sitting on potential retrenchments, letters being sent out, and almost 6,000 who could lose their jobs. Uh, you, you speak of uh, picketing that you carried out recently, which, from what we understand, wasn't well attended. Uh, one would think that when your job is in the line, you would attend a picket such as this just to express your desire to, to keep your job. Yeah. No, look, I mean, it's, it's a horrendous situation, and workers are very scared. I mean, in fact, at the post office, about 3,000 staff have already resigned over the past year, year and a half, because why well, would you go to work if you're not getting paid? How would you afford to go to work if you're not getting paid? Um, workers' time is also a lesson to them, and they will look for jobs elsewhere. Um, something has to be done. We can't simply allow these workers to, to be sent into absolute poverty. At SABC, one of the reasons why the picket didn't have a great return up because management sent Threat, letters threatening any staff who actually went to the picket and threatened them with disciplinary action. So many staff were simply fearful, so we had to bring in workers from uh, other units outside of the SABC um, just to go and show solidarity. But I think for us, the point is to put pressure on management to come and bring them to the negotiation table, which they've been refusing to do for far too long, 
and to put pressure on the minister and the government also to look at what can be done to assist these institutions. I think we all agree they can play a role, they can be rebuilt, but I think the issue is let's move with speed, but we can't simply afford a scenario where this soap opera drags on for year after year and workers are the casualties of this process. Do you feel you have capacity to do any more than you're already doing? I mean, you, you, you speak about this is continually dragging on, something needs to be done urgently, and, and it seems to be an, an apparent, a, a bit of an, an, an irony, because you've, you've been pushing uh, your agenda for, for a little over 12 months, as you suggest, but there's been no movement from the other side. No, look, we have no choice but to keep pushing and to keep fighting um, until we can save workers' jobs. We don't have a choice. We can't simply just fold our arms and, and walk away, not on workers' salaries or on workers' lives are depending upon it. Um, that's why we have to pull it all stop. So we have met with the minister on Thursday, not the first time meeting, actually. But I think we do get a sense of hope from his assurances that he will come back to us next week um, after his engagements. We think there is alternatives. Already the headcount of the post office, for example, has decreased um, from 14,000 to 11,000. I think that's enough now. And we should be looking at alternative uh, options to it now. We've had some positive indications from the business rescue practitioners that are willing to negotiate a reduce, uh, reduction in the headcount uh, retrenchments. So we're hopeful that we can find an alternative. But it does mean that there has to be some support from the fiscus um, to stabilize the situations. But we do appreciate from the, from the side of Treasury, um, the era of endless bailouts is not sustainable. That can't continue. It has to be conditional upon business turnaround plans. Uh, but we think for those turnaround plans to succeed, it has to include bringing the staff with you. Um, no company can exist without the staff, and we, feel for, we are fearful that the plans of the post office, for example, to cut 200 branches is not going to assist us. It's actually going to make matters worse. But I think for us, we're willing to engage. We made proposals to government, um, including what we think government can do itself in terms of giving support as a customer um, not only to the SABC, which has a huge public broadcasting role and uh, educational role to play, but also to the post office and the post bank too. If government from departments to entities to SOEs to municipalities can use the post office for their courier services, can use the post bank for the banking services, that huge injection of, of uh, liquidity will be enough to enable the post bank and post office to survive. We are confident SABC too can, can grow. If you look at the, the radio station at SABC, they have a huge footprint. But what it does require is competent management. It requires an aggressive advertising plan. That's what's going to help it take off. So the, the, the foundations are there, but it just requires a bit of support, especially over the short and medium term, to get them back on their feet.